Do your friends send you presents like this? Yeah, mine do. Anyway, here's a interview from the archives. Um, way back in 2018, I was at Fort William at the Downhill World Cup and I bumped into an old friend. Um, Jason Marsh, or Marshy, as some of you may know him, um, was a mechanic for the Santa Cruz Syndicate team and in particular for Greg Minar. Um, he was kind enough to have a little chat with me in the back of the team bus um, and it was just, I found it fascinating. Um, he had some really interesting enlightening points and things to say all about uh, his experience at the World Cups and how he got into mechanicking for the Santa Cruz Syndicate team. Um, so sit back with a cup of um, FU <laughs> and enjoy the video. So I'm Jason Marsh, I'm, I'll just make sure there's nothing incriminating in the background there that I'll get into trouble for. I'm Jason Marsh, I'm the, a mechanic on the Santa Cruz Syndicate. I mainly look after Greg's bike at the races. I'm also team driver, I drive the van to events, uh, set the pit up. Yeah, I'm, what, what's the other? I've been with the team since uh, 2012. I was working now on transition bikes before that. After the end of the second year, I went round the pits and handed out my business card and I had about five business cards with me and I walked around the pits going, what team would I like to work for? And I walked past a few going, mm, no, no. And I, had, I basically got back, I had four business cards left and I'd only handed out one and that was to the syndicate. Kathy rang up and said, uh, uh, can you go and work with Greg uh, at an event? We want to test you out, see if, you, see if you're all right, see if you guys get on. It was the middle of winter, she said, I'm really sorry, but the event is in Brazil. It was a bit of a shock because I think it was minus 30 where I lived. It was really cold, middle of winter, too cold to ski. And then when we landed in Brazil, it was 30, 32 degrees. Is the industry harder to get into now if you have a passion and you want to do something you've just got to dedicate yourself to it and it'll end up happening. I mean, I end up just, just used to come to races, had a few friends that were racing, used to help them out and just get known and, you know, you're just friendly and helpful around the place and you get known and then that's how it ended up for me. I was a plumber before that. I um, never worked in a bike shop, just really enjoyed working on my bike and my, my friend's bikes and kind of got, got on for that, never been trained how to, I, I haven't, have, haven't got a Shimano certificate or a Fox certificate or any bike certificates or anything like that, I've just learnt uh, by working on, on nice bikes, I've never had to rebuild a, a, a cone and ball bearing hub or anything like that, you know, I'm just working on the best stuff. Um, I've started off on Shimano. Uh, and that's all I know. If someone gave me a set of Avid brakes or SRAM brakes, whatever they call them, I would, do not know how to bleed them. I don't know how to rebuild a seat post. I don't know how to rebuild a fork. We get stuff a few years before to try out before they even go in the Fox catalogue. So yeah, I don't I don't know much about that sort of stuff. I um, I I wouldn't know how to rebuild a DT Swiss hub for example because all we've used is Chris King hubs on this and then on other teams we've had other hubs that I that I know like uh, before that we, we were on the uh, Crank Brothers hubs um, so yeah I'm just you know it's very specific the work we do we don't uh, I only carry a very minimum amount of tools around with me you know if, if someone someone came up to me and said can I borrow a spoke key I've only got one spoke key and it's for a certain uh, spoke nipple and it would only fit the, these nipples so people can't borrow that stuff. We do quite a lot of work with the engineers at Santa Cruz to try and get the bikes riding really nice which is really cool because that filters down to the other bikes. You know the new the new Nomad came out and that was something that they'd learnt from the V10. I think the V10 it's a little bit heavier but I think it actually pedals better than the, than, than the Nomad so that's kind of we're all, the, the guys at Santa Cruz are always learning about the bikes and stuff like that. So it's kind of nice to be involved in that. How do they choose their riders? I think that they could have any of the top 10, maybe top 20 riders and get them on 
on a V10 and on this program with all the stuff that we've got, like the wheels and the tyres and the suspension, and I think any of those top 10, 20 riders would do well on this team, uh, just because they've got the best of everything. Um, not saying that it's just the bike, you know, I mean, it must have been a pretty tough decision of who to choose, but then I just think these bikes are just so fast and they're like, we've we've been working pretty hard with the engineers to get them how, how everyone wants them and it's like, they don't really listen to my feedback but I try and take all the riders feedback and convince the engineers of what, what to do. Um, so yeah, the whole choo choosing riders I think it's more down to personality. I know we've been looking at that well, the team have been looking at Luca for a while because he's just such a nice kid, and we knew that with a little bit of uh, well, because he because he was pretty much a privateer up until he got on here. So, uh, what do you need, PA? I need a chain really quick. So. No, sorry, this one. Now <laughs> it is that one. Okay, take two. What trail feature still scares me? Jumps. I like to stay on the ground. Favourite part of the job is sometimes Greg gets me to do his qualifying run for him. Um, Favourite part of the job is driving home after a race because I know it's all over, there's nothing I can do and I can just kind of relax. I, I, get, I get quite stressed out. You know, when like the bike's got to be absolutely perfect every time it goes up. You know, it's just like uh, I try and keep the bike so it's like race run for every single run. I don't want to have put fast bits on just for race run. Every time the bike has to be like that. So you know, it's like every two or three runs, the wheels will come off or clean all the hubs and stuff like that. You know, some people just say. Uh, we pull the seals out for a race run, but it has to be like that the whole time. Um, the reason for that is if the bike's a, a little bit faster coming to a corner, Greg knows his braking points, and if the bike's running faster, he needs to change his braking points. It's it's kind of kind of stressful keeping that going, and then if he falls over, I, I get quite stressed out too because I feel like he's trusting me with his life a little bit because of the way he rides the bike and everything just has to be perfect and it's just like if he falls off and hurts himself and it's my fault I wouldn't really like that. The best bit is doing that though and getting on the like working on the bikes and seeing the results come through. Um, the best bit is when 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 Greg or one of the other guys on the, no just Greg is when Greg wins is the, is the best I think that's really I really like that and that's why you do it. We're not here to make up numbers, we're just here to win. So when he doesn't win, even a second place, I get a little bit annoyed. Well, I just get pissed off. No, no I just get a little sick and it's just like, damn. It's just like, because I know he can win any race and it's just one little mistake or maybe it might be something like the, like he goes through a puddle and gets a little bit of dirt on the brakes or something like that. When he goes to the top of the hill and he sets off for his race run, you know, take his goggles and the wind train and everything, everything to the top for him, and he's gone out of the start gate, that's the, it's kind of a relaxing time because you know you can't do any more and he's gone. I just kind of hide and go and find a, find a, a spot to hide in for five minutes until I know it's over. And then we don't, we hardly, hardly ever know what's happening with the results until we get to the bottom. So that's that's good and bad parts. I think maybe that maybe the the um, the worst part is everyone thinks you're on holiday, but getting up 7:30, having breakfast, which isn't too bad at the moment. It's kind of a late start. Normally it's 5:30, so you get up at 7:30 in the morning. You work all day. You don't really have a tea break. You don't have uh, you don't have a lunch break. You just try and get a little bit of food in during the day and then you kind of pack up and go home about 9, 10 o'clock at night. Not going home and seeing your wife and your dog. That's, you know, I haven't, haven't seen, seen the wife and dog. Dog and wife. I haven't seen Maurice and Amy for uh, uh, three weeks. I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be around about a month until I see her next. And it's just like, that's, that's kind of the worst thing about the job, I think.
team works as a family a little bit. So we've got Doug and Kathy, that's uh, uh, mum and dad, and then we've got the riders, which are the kids, and then uh, I must be like Uncle Brian from Family Guy, you know. And yeah, that little thing of having having the two families, which is nice. I don't know who King Midas is, but if he's got powers, does he touch everything to gold? I'd probably touch a bike and turn it into aluminium. How many years does Greg have left? Oh, I don't know, it's just like, what's the what's the retirement age in South Africa? Is like 65, I think, maybe 67? I know in France, New Zealand it's 67, so... have it um, I hope you enjoyed that interview and enjoyed the new format if you did I actually also interviewed an absolute legend of the sport that particular weekend the one and only Steve Pete um, I was not at all prepared for that particular interview um, and subsequently ended up quite an awkward chat um, entirely my fault anyway that video has never seen the light of day uh, but if you would like to see it please let me know in the comments below I don't know why I'm suggesting this um, but anyway, maybe I'll upload it next week. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Cheers.